What's up guys, welcome to the channel and welcome to today's video. So I was having a rather interesting conversation with somebody on Instagram recently. They had seen the dyno video that we did over at Sound Performance and they started to ask me all kinds of questions on just like motor specs and who put it together and all that stuff. And when I told them that I put it together, uh, I think they were probably a little bit surprised. But uh, you know, they started asking me additional questions like what tools and stuff you needed and just like all kinds of specialty stuff. So uh, I just wanted to go ahead and put this quick video together, show you guys some of the tools and stuff you do need if you are thinking about putting your own 2JZ GTE motor together. All right guys, so before we get started, I'm gonna make a few assumptions throughout this video. Assumption number one, I'm gonna assume that you've already got an engine stand. And if you are using an engine stand, I highly recommend using the 7M head bolts because they're a great length to go and hold the block to the stand itself, so pro tip. Uh, second assumption that I'm going to make is that you're going to have a professional machine shop go through and do all the machining for you. Uh, you know, board if it needs board, hones, line hone if you're running billet mains, deck it, hot tank it, all that stuff. Okay, so that's the second assumption. Assumption number three, I'm going to assume that you have a basic set of hand tools up to and including a set of 12 point metric sockets to go through and take this thing apart. And finally, I'm also going to assume that you have a torque wrench because that's just, I mean, everybody needs a torque wrench. So other than that, let's go ahead and jump in, check out some of this stuff. So all this stuff behind me is the stuff that we're gonna be talking about today. I'm sure a lot of you probably already know what a lot of this stuff is. If you don't, stay tuned. We're gonna go ahead and check it out. I'm not gonna go super deep in depth with like how to go through and actually use a lot of this stuff. I will tell you what the tool is, what it's used for, uh, things of that nature. If you do have any specific questions, feel free to leave me a comment in the section below. Additionally, I will also be posting links to all of these in the description below. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so first thing we're gonna go ahead and jump in with is just fluids. You're definitely going to go and need some engine oil. So you can just use standard 1030, whichever, uh, just to go through and lube the cylinder walls and things like that. Just kind of give you a little bit of lubrication and everything there. You're also going to go and need some ATF so that when you get the block back from the machine shop, you can go through and clean the cylinder bores, make sure everything's 100% good to go, just because there does tend to be some kind of de some debris and everything like that in there from time to time. And you want to make sure those things are 100% clean. All right, so first thing up, we got this Com Cams, Com and Lifter Install Lube. Uh, basically, use that for when you're putting in the camshafts. This stuff, Redline Assembly Lube, you're gonna be using a lot of, so I'd recommend getting the bigger bottle. Definitely comes in handy. You're gonna be using this stuff for pretty much everything. So everything from the piston rod assemblies to actually going through and putting the bearings and everything on, everything like that. So definitely get the big bottle. Next we got this ARP Torque Lube. This is gonna be used for your studs. Uh, it's also gonna be used for your rod bolts just so you can get a nice even torque when you do go through and torque those down for the final time. So starting from the top down, we're not gonna go into anything super heavy. We're not gonna go into, uh, you know, like valve seats and all that stuff. This is just gonna be super basic. If you needed to go through and, I don't know, remove your valve stem seals perhaps, uh, this would be a great tool for that. Or if you just wanted to do some simple upgrades and just uh, upgrade your springs and retainers, this here is a Toyo tool. And this you can actually go and use to both remove and install. All right, so if you look in there, assuming I can get the, angle quasi right there's actually magnets and stuff in there when you actually go through and take this and depress it on a cylinder head it's going to go ahead and capture the valve locks in here and then you can just pull the retainer and the spring out and then you flip it over and it has this little ball end okay and that'll allow you to just depress it again and it'll go and snap in the new valve locks after you upgrade your springs and retainers so now that we got the easy stuff out of the way let's get a little bit more complicated the hardest part in building an engine is just you got to be really, really meticulous with your math, with your clearances. I mean, they say measure twice, cut once. I'd say measure four, five, six times and just make sure 100% sure that you're doing your math right and everything from the get-go because otherwise it's going to be a colossal pain in the butt. So first thing you're going to want to do with any engine build is just go through and measure everything. What I have here is a four inch outside micrometer and you're going to use this thing to measure the journals on the crankshaft and just mic everything. I usually measure it three to four times around and then take an average of all those measurements just to make sure it is good to go. Next up, we have everybody's least favorite tool. This is a dial bore gauge. I actually really like this. It's super easy to use and once you kind of get the hang of it, it really comes in handy. So we're gonna use this to go and measure the bores of each cylinder as well as go and check the bore of the line hone. What we're gonna be checking for there is just to make sure it's 100% round and it's not egg shaped or anything oblong or anything like that. You could also, if you wanted to, use a set of inside as well as outside micrometers. I really don't like that method as much just because you have to go and measure multiple times and I don't like to scratch things and really I'm just lazy and this is a much easier way to do it. So dial bore gauge, get one. All right, so once we've measured the cylinder bore as well as the main bore and all the journals on the crankshaft, 
we're gonna go through and gap the piston rings. For this, we're gonna need a set of feeler gauges. You're also gonna use these if you're doing valve lash on a cylinder head, so just FYI there. We're gonna need a piston ring file. This is a manual piston ring file. You're also gonna need these guys. This is a set of ring expanders. Do not walk the ring down the piston. You can go and bend it just ever so slightly. These are a much easier tool. They're super cheap. You just literally put the piston ring on there, open it up right like that, and then slide it down over the piston and it's on. It's super simple. So definitely get these. They're well worth it. If nothing else, that way you don't break a piston ring. This guy is a lifesaver. This is just a little 90 degree, I don't know, pick, hook, scratch all, whatever the heck you want to call it. But I tell you what, when you're going through and putting in the circlips on the wrist pin, this is the best thing you could possibly ask for because you literally just hook it in there and twist and it makes it so much easier. So if you're struggling with the circlips on the wrist pins, definitely go and get yourself one of these guys. Again, super cheap, definitely comes in clutch though. Now, whenever you're going and putting the piston rod assembly actually into the engine block, you're gonna need one of these. This is a piston ring compressor. It's a nice little tapered sleeve. This is hands down the best thing I've ever found to go and use. There are some manual ones. You see them with the little ratchety, I don't even know, Allen key thingamabob on it. Those things suck. They break rings and I just, I don't like them at all. Um, they're a lot more complicated to use, a lot harder to use. This thing literally just takes some oil, slick up the inside, put it on the block and then in goes your piston rod assembly. It's super simple. You can get these. This is made by ARP, this one specifically. You can get these. I use 87 millimeter pistons and a super right over here. So, but you can get them in pretty much any size. So if you wanted to do a stock bore, keep it at 86 millimeter pistons, you could. If you wanted to go 20 over, do 86 and a half, you could do that too. They make them in all those different sizes. So lastly, once you go and drop your piston rod assembly into the engine block and you're getting ready to go and marry it to the crankshaft, you're gonna need one of these guys. This is an ARP bolt stretch gauge. Basically what this does, it's exactly like it sounds. It measures how much the rod bolts actually go and stretch. So your rod bolts are kind of like springs almost, and you do want them to go and stretch a certain amount. So not, not only do you want to torque them, but you want to make sure they have adequate stretch and equal stretch across all the bolts, just to make sure you get equal torque load across them. So this is definitely probably single-handedly one of the most important tools in the whole equation. Obviously you got your torque wrench. You want to make sure that's calibrated and stuff too, but this guy definitely buy one of these. And the last thing we're gonna need is this. Now, I know some of you are probably thinking, Nick, I have no idea what this is. That's okay, I'm gonna explain it to you right here. This is a tool, it's kinda of like a can, can opener for your oil filter, all right? The reason you wanna use this is because, and you actually probably saw me use this in one of my previous videos, but you go through and put the oil canister in here and then tighten it down, right like that, and just spin it around. It actually goes through and cuts it open so you can go through and physically inspect the pleats in the oil filter. This is super important the first time you go and start up a vehicle. You do want to make sure you don't have any glitter or just heavy metal shavings or anything like that inside the oil filter. Because if you do, that means your clearances and everything are probably off and you're going to want to go through and take things back apart. And it'll save you a lot of time, a lot of money. It sucks going through and doing all the labor and everything like that twice. But, but buying another set of bearings is a heck of a lot cheaper than going and buying a whole new set of pistons and rods and doing all the machine work and everything like that again. So. This is a very affordable tool. I think it's only like 60 or 80 bucks and it could save you a lot of money in the long term. I always go through and cut my oil filters open after I change the oil on the Supra. It just is kind of a preventative maintenance thing. I picked this little trick up from uh, Twins Turbo actually back in the day uh, when they were doing one of their motor builds. All right guys, so that is gonna wrap it up as far as the tools and everything go. If you do have any questions on anything, anything you saw here today, definitely leave me a comment in the section below like I said before. I know I didn't go super far in depth as to how to go and use a lot of those tools just because I'm not building a motor right now and it's a lot easier to actually physically show you what I'm talking about, how to go and use the tool when I have something to go and use it on. So, so hopefully that'll at least allow you guys to go and increase your toolbox size if you are thinking about building a 2J and give you kind of a preliminary rundown of what all you need. The main thing, like I said before, whenever you're building one of these motors is to just measure everything, be very, very meticulous. One thing you guys did not see in here today is plastic gauge. I really don't believe in that stuff. I am super confident in my measurements when I take them because I do go and measure so many times. If you're doing bearing clearances, like if you were doing a main clearance, for example, what you would want to do is go and measure the bore. So measure the main bore. And then you'd also go and measure the main journal on the crankshaft and subtract those two differences. That's going to give you a pretty big number. Then you can go through and look up, I use ACL bearings on this car, and you can actually go through and look up what the thickness is of each bearing. Now keep in mind, this is in halves, okay? But you can go through and get the thickness of each bearing, 
and then do a little bit of basic subtraction, and that tells you what your clearance is. And you get the same uh, same clearance all the way down on all, what is it, all seven mains, I think, if I remember right. Get the same clearance all the way down, and then you know you're good. So you don't need to use plastic gauge, you don't need to torque and untorque and da 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 you can just measure twice, cut once, as they say. And honestly, too, one thing I really like about that method is it does remove a lot of the gray area. You don't have to go and worry about, oh, well, it's just a little bit too thick on the once, and you know. I mean, plastic gauge is really subjective, in my opinion, and it leaves a lot to be desired. So I'm a huge fan of just measuring everything and going that route. Now, one thing I will tell you, if you are doing the measurement method with your dial bore gauge, you're gonna wanna go through and torque down all the mains because they do warp and distort and everything. So you're gonna wanna go and torque them down first and then measure and then do your subtraction. So pro tip right there. Other than that guys, that is going to do it for today's video. I really hope you all enjoyed it. I really hope you all got something out of it. Uh, like I said, probably two other times in this video, make sure you leave me a comment in the section below if you do have any questions. I really hope you guys found this video helpful. I really kind of wish somebody had made one of these videos before back when I was putting the motor together. It would have helped me out a lot. So hopefully this helps, it helps you out as well. Other than that, do not forget to like, comment, and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'll see you guys very soon in the next video. Catch you next time.